Hello everybody, I'm Trent, and I've been in the drone industry about five years now. Ever since the Phantom 1 came out, I've been using, selling, and supporting drone systems. It's been amazing to see drone technology advance, so let me tell you how we got to this point. While you could purchase parts and build your own DIY drone, Parrot was the first to make a drone product with the release of their AR drone in 2010. They released an updated AR drone in 2012 and were one of the only companies in the space at the time. Until 2013 when the Phantom 1 came along. It sold just as a copter and a controller, brushless gimbals were in their infancy, so many, like myself, hard mounted a GoPro onto the drone and shot in time lapse mode or high speed video. We'd get a few seconds of somewhat stable video, if you could call it that, but we were enthralled and quickly becoming addicted. This is Colin Gwynn, ex-CEO of DJI North America. He made a series of videos that taught first generation drone pilots how to set up, fly, and maintain their phantoms. Remember him, we'll be talking about him later. Six months later in June, DJI released the Zenmuse H3 2D 2-axis gimbal. Adding a gimbal required customers to open up and modify the drone themselves. DJI made a video on this. Unfortunately, there was a really high defective rate and I personally RMA'd over 120 gimbals. In October 2013, DJI updated the Phantom to the Phantom 2 and 2 Vision. This update included a new flight controller, bigger battery, bigger props, and plug and play gimbal connections. The Phantom 2 Vision was the first to use an app on your phone as a flight data monitor. I mainly use this as a photography rig as the camera only had a one axis servo tilt. At the time the lenses were fisheye like GoPro and Adobe created a lens profile to unwarp the images. Around this time is a good time to mention GoPro. Original DJI Phantom products were designed to be an accessory to GoPro. GoPro and DJI started talking about working together. Frank Wang and the DJI team felt that Nick Woodman and GoPro were treating them like a typical Chinese supplier. The deal didn't work out. DJI set a major focus on camera R&D, and GoPro hired some drone professionals to start working on a drone. Do you guys all want GoPro to make a quadcopter? Oh, come on, do you guys want GoPro to make a quadcopter? <laughs> okay, GoPro is making a quadcopter. All right. It's official. All right. Oh. DJI released the S800 Evo, an update to their S800, and had to deal with many reports of the flip of death while using their Wukong M flight controller. I know people who had multiple instances, one of them being on an octocopter with a red camera flying over water. Seeing the popularity of drones taking off, the team at Pocket Drone put together a drone from hobby grade parts, made a frame with a 3D printer, and went to Kickstarter. The project was funded on January 8th, 2014 after raising $929,000 from 1,946 backers. They shipped their drone and went out of business. Apparently, Frank Wang didn't like Colin calling himself DJI Innovation's CEO as he was getting lots of press. Part of my job at the time was to communicate with DJI North America, and one day the phones stopped ringing and the emails were not being responded to. DJI Global stripped down DJI Innovation's North America of its full operating capacity, leaving many in the dark. Colin rightfully filed an injection, causing the reseller I worked for to get creative on how to source its product. The injunction ended on July 24th, 2014, and DJI released this statement. This matter has been resolved to the mutual satisfaction of all parties ending in the lawsuit's dismissal and the temporary injunction being dissolved. DJI released their Spreading Wings S1000 in January 2014, followed by a three-axis gimbal for the Phantom series called H3 3D in March of 2014. In June of 2014, we saw a few more crowdsourced drones. This is Hexo Plus, a fly-by-itself follow-me drone for action sports. Simultaneously, AirDog, a foldable quadcopter, was released with a similar focus on action sports and follow me type footage. July 2014 welcomed an update to the Phantom 2 Vision called Phantom 2 Vision Plus. It had the same camera as the original Phantom Vision, but it was mounted on a 3 axis gimbal. DJI released their S900 in August, and 3DR released the Iris in September of 2014. It had a Pixhawk flight controller in it, which meant you could program autonomous flights. The Inspire 1 was a transforming quadcopter design, meaning the arms and motors are also the landing gear. Word on the street is DJI Inspire 1's design language is the way it is because it was going to be used as a flying prop in the Transformers 2 movie, but DJI didn't make the timeline. 
The DJI Inspire one was over-engineered for the X3 camera and later received an X5 camera, a micro four-thirds sensor capable camera with multiple lenses. This changed the game. Simultaneously released with the Inspire one was DJI's SDK program. Similar to how Apple made a hardware device and opened it to its developers, DJI now allows individuals and organizations to develop apps for the DJI platform. This was extremely smart and brought a lot of attention to DJI products from various industries. Seeing DJI's success with the Phantom Vision, Parrot released a new drone, the Bebop, in November 2014. It used an almost 180 degree lens and cropped in on the image to keep it stable. This is known as digital image stabilization. Xanodrone popped up on Kickstarter in November, raising $2.9 million. It was a palm-sized drone packed with tons of features. It was truly too good to be true at $191 backer price and they ran out of money about one year later. In November 2014, Plexi Drone showed up on crowdfunding websites. They raised $2.3 million using Kickstarter and are still shipping units out to backers four years later. In January 2015, Ehang successfully kickstarted their first drone, Ghost. Their 350mm drone didn't fly with a controller, but by tilting your phone. Oh boy. Coming in clutch in April 2015, after a little over a year and a half in R&D, DJI released the DJI Phantom 3 line which consisted of a standard, advanced, and pro versions. They all had integrated cameras on 3-axis gimbals, the Pro was a 4K version, and featured a new controller. You mounted your phone on the controller and used it as a GUI to control the settings of your drone like we still do today. The rest of 2015 was peak crowdsourced drone season. In April we saw Simi, a hexacopter follow me type drone made by rocket scientists. Hi-Fi showed up in May 2015 and claimed that their tilt motor technology enabled their drone to move in any direction without tilting. This made their drone have fewer parts not needing a fragile three-axis gimbal. Sprite also made its debut in May 2015. Sprite is a coaxial drone about the size of a water bottle. It flew with the Pixhawk flight controller and was marketed to outdoor enthusiasts and hikers. They now have an industrial version called One that carries thermal cameras and other sensors. After Colin Gwynn joined 3DR, 3DR released the Solo in May of 2015. Solo had some smart shot modes that automated some complex flying maneuvers. It was also one of the last drones that used a GoPro as its recording camera. Solo shipped, but without a gimbal, and didn't last too much longer after that. 3DR took the L and started the Drone Code Foundation, which provides flight control software for many different companies. There's been a few key moments when the masses were exposed to drone technology, and the release of Lily Camera was one of them. Instead of raising funds on Kickstarter, they took pre-orders on their website to the tune of $34 million. At a $7.99 pre-order price, that's over 42,000 pre-orders. To those of us in the industry who understands how drones work, we knew it was too good to be true, especially for such a small company. Even after raising an extra $15 million in venture capital, they shut down operations and refunded $34 million in drone sales. Then we saw the Blade Chroma. It was manufactured by Unique, using many of the same parts as the new Typhoon Q500 quadcopter Unique released too. In August 2015, the Micro Drone team went on Kickstarter and raised over $3.6 million for a toy drone and a small, cheap Wi-Fi camera on the bottom. For $75, why not get an indoor flyer for fun? In September 2015, Photokite came out with the Photokite Fee, a tethered drone that carried a GoPro. They had a more industrial version with a shoulderable battery pack and automatic retraction system that I used at an airport once in New York, but decided to take a stab at the consumer market. Photokite Fee sold for $349. Flyby released their Indiegogo campaign in October 2015. They were showing a case that could auto-launch and land your drone, change the battery for you, and you use your goggles to view your flight in VR. They were over-promising and I knew they were going to under-deliver. Power Up FPV was a Kickstarter project in collaboration with Parrot. This is a system you clipped onto a paper airplane and gave you thrust and control capabilities. They raised over $475,000 and even had one of their systems registered with an N number in an act of protest. In November 2015, Parrot released an update to the Bebop, followed by the release of another drone called Fly. It was a cute flying ball that raised $356,000 on Kickstarter. 
Features weren't the selling point of that drone, rather its unique propulsion technology. January rolled around and Unique dropped their Typhoon H. After a $60 million investment from Intel, they were able to integrate Intel RealSense technology into the drone. It was the first drone that could truly avoid obstacles, solving one of the biggest problems that drone flyers have, crashing. This made Frank Wang, the CEO of DJI, visit the Unique booth during the CES trade show. Also at CES, Ehang released their 182, standing for one person, eight motors, and four arms. Few DJI engineers split and joined Autel, a car robotics company looking to get into the drone space. They essentially made a mirror image of the Phantom. Literally, the gimbal motors are on the opposite sides and everything. They made the Altel X-Star, then the Premium, which launched in January 2016. Onago Fly, also known as Not Gonna Fly, showed up on Kickstarter in February. They made about $3.5 million on crowdfunding alone. I could barely fly it, but they shipped on time to their backers, and that was a first. In February of 2016, PowerVision released their Power Egg. Now, this was just an egg sculpture on the ground. I didn't think it was gonna fly. Props to them, it flies, and you can buy it right now on the market. DJI released their Phantom 4 drone in March 2016. This featured the same imaging sensor as the Phantom 3 Pro, but featured a new body, battery, and was DJI's first entry into the obstacle avoidance market with two forward-looking sensors. Following the Phantom 4 in March is Pro Drone Bird. This was a foldable drone that had a payload swapping capabilities, but it didn't hit with the market. Pro Drone had to change names, it's now GDU, and had to change their logo for being too similar to Tesla. In April 2016, Zero Zero Robotics released the Hover Camera, a drone built with a permanent propeller enclosure for safety. Shortly after, we saw Sky hit the crowdfunding circuit. To tell you a little bit about the company, I have their former sales manager dishing some details during a pre-presentation live stream for GDU's O2. And they spent money, like they're printing it in the basement. So that told me one of two things. Either they have really strong investors and they're planning on being here forever, or a bunch of morons are at the top of the company. And I guessed A, and it turned out to be B. So. <laughs> Enter September 2016, Inter Drone Season. Unique releases a small phone controlled selfie drone called Breeze. Zero Tech releases Dobby, a foldable quadcopter using the Snapdragon flight controller. GoPro releases the Karma, the name they chose to show DJI they're getting them back for the deal that didn't happen. DJI leaked photos of their highly anticipated Mavic five minutes before Nick Woodman walked on stage and released the Mavic a few weeks later. Now the media attention is on the leaked photos of the Mavic Pro rather than the Karma. Classic DJI. DJI had more up its sleeve to finish 2016. In November, they released the Phantom 4 Pro, featuring a one inch sensor and 360 degree obstacle avoidance. Phantom 4 Pro was joined by a new Inspire 2 with an X7 Super 35 millimeter camera that had its own suite of lenses and can shoot 6K video right to an SSD. At CES, Autel tried to take a stab at the Mavic market with the Evo and Unique made some slight changes to the Typhoon H and released a new industrial drone called Typhoon H520. In May 2017, Swell Pro released their Splash Drone 3.0 with an integrated camera gimbal that is submersible underwater. DJI released their Spark in two options, with remote controller or without remote controller, and we see gesture control for the first time on a drone. In September 2017, GDU released the O2, a small compact drone that mounted together with the remote controller. In October, Moment Drone launched on Kickstarter and got $337,000. The AEE Selfly releases in November and we head to CES Las Vegas 2018. At CES, we saw DJI Rise Robotics' new Tello drone. The unique HD racer is now branded as the Blade Inductrix FPV HD and Unique launched a remote control airplane called the Firebird FPV, pulling off Unique's fixed wing heritage. DJI waits until after CES to release the Mavic Air in late January, featuring most of the same features the Mavic Pro had, but in a much smaller package. They sold tons. Since the release of the DJI Mavic Air, we've seen more and more Kickstarters pop up. The Mark Drone, Mystic, and Hubson Xeno. In June, Parrot released the Anafi, and Unique released a drone called Mantis that has a dedicated remote controller. DJI quickly followed up with the release of the new Mavic Pro line with the releases of the DJI Mavic 2 Zoom and the DJI Mavic 2 Pro. And that leads us into CES 2019. 
We haven't really seen a lot of drone innovation in the last two years. Drones are sensing and avoiding obstacles up to 360 degrees around the drone. Drones have bigger image sensors than ever before. They're flying better than ever before. So what more is there to innovate on? At CES, we saw a lot of underwater drones and underwater sporting equipment in the drone area, which kind of makes sense because it uses a lot of the same parts that a drone uses. As we go through this next year of the product cycle, I'm interested to see what DJI is going to release in 2019 and what drones are going to be available from every company this next holiday season. Thanks for watching this video, really appreciate it. If I seem to have forgotten something, please let me know. I did not put every single drone in this video, just drones that I thought were notable, left out a lot of toys. But if I did forget something, please let me know in the comments. If you want to talk about drones, please hit me up, send me a DM. I love to talk about this stuff. And if you are new around here, my name's Trent. This is my channel. I'd love for you to subscribe if you can. Give it a thumbs up if you like this video. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.